A deadline for North Idaho College's accreditation is looming like the boss battle at the end of a video game. So you know we can count on the KCRCC rated and vetted trio to do the absolute worst thing possible. On July 2nd this year, the NIC trustees met to approve a plan to handle the loss of accreditation should it occur as required by the NWCCU, its accrediting agency. This has to be, and it is a mandate, and it has to be done, but if you would think of it in terms of like emergency planning, you have to plan for everything, but you hope you don't have to implement it. Here's the current situation. NIC, particularly the NIC Board of Trustees, and underline that, has not made demonstrable progress in several key areas to address the recommendations from the April 2023 Show Cause visit. The college is under a Show Cause warning regarding board governance issues, specifically micromanagement by the board, these guys, of the college president, Nick Swain. This is a board governance issue that's risking accreditation. NIC was issued a sanction of warning by the NWCCU Board of Commissioners on April 1, 2022, and subsequently issued a sanction of show cause in February 2023. Federal regulations require that issues underlying the initial sanction must be resolved no later than April 1, 2025, that is, within three years of the issuance of the first sanction for this two-year college. The NWCCU Board will then be required to take adverse action unless NIC demonstrates significant progress toward resolving issues underlying the sanctions well before April 1, 2025. This is serious stuff. This board under these clowns has made little progress in backing the college away from the threat of losing accreditation. In fact, my observation is that they're driving full steam ahead, taking none of these threats seriously. NIC is required to come up with a plan, which was the purpose of the July 2nd meeting, and they have three choices, two of which are ugly. The first option is a teach-out plan. This is not a practical option. It basically means that for a year, they shunt students off to other institutions to finish their education, then NIC dies. No more college, no more trustees. The second option is to transfer control of the college to another institution of higher learning. Option two is the least disruptive of the three. NIC must select another higher education institution in Idaho two or four years to temporarily oversee the college. Under this option, NIC can eventually regain its status as a separate accredited agency. Option two is the best choice and makes the most sense, but these guys aren't good at making sense. Remember, it's their actions and their behavior that's brought the college to this point. The third option is the worst. They ignore the NWCCU and the college loses accreditation and NIC closes forever. The board was required at the July 2nd meeting to choose one of these options to present as a plan for moving forward should accreditation be pulled in the future. Let Dr. Swain speak regarding the requirement of the NWCCU that the board decide about which option to take. And I apologize for the NIC video here. The operator didn't switch between the PowerPoint and the video of the board, which is teensy tiny up in the upper right corner of the screen, and I have added professional quality artwork to compensate. I, I want to preserve the college. And then uh, what cost, sir? Okay, let, let, let me finish. I want, to, I want to preserve the college for the students and for the community. Um, and the only way that we can do that is to transfer control. Um, otherwise, the, the college goes down. If, if it's your decision, I, I'm making a recommendation, but it's your decision. What, what I'm asking is, the, um, do we go with option one, which is the demise of the college, or do we go with option two? If the board goes with option two, they must choose another Idaho higher education institution to act in a governance role for the college. But the booger eater from Athol doesn't want the college to choose nearby University of Idaho as the sponsoring institution, and he has woven a tapestry of conspiracy theories to justify why. Because here's, here's the problem. Maybe I need to give a history lesson, but I've got, you know, red, red siren, red lights, and, and uh, red flags, and, and bells and whistles going off in my head because it feels like we're coming to an event that I was getting the fourth down a path. 
And it's an interesting process because there's things that have occurred over the last three years in particular, in particular the last two years. And there's been a bit of a battle for control of this college. And we've seen some different actions through lawfare, through legislative attempts, through um, the ballot box, and we've seen some stuff through bureaucratic fiat. And this, some of the uh, legislative got to blow up in 2023, through a series of three bills and then later a singular bill. We've seen some interesting legislative fiat through the SBOE and the assignment of, of what I still consider illegitimate trustees to further the narrative and the agenda. Yes, Todd is too slow to recognize that it's his own actions that have caused this issue. Firing a president without cause, losing their insurance because of it, hiring two overpriced crony attorneys, suspending the current president, hiring a second president at great expense, bloating the athletics budget, and on and on. Can you see why board governance is an issue? Todd is the overheated nuclear reactor in this Chernobyl-level disaster that he created himself. It just felt too convenient. It feels like well, there are folks that have driven us to this corner and then it's put back on us trustees. Well, if you blow up the college or kill the college, it's on you. But no, we didn't drive that bus to there. No, absolutely, Todd. You did drive that bus to there. And Trustee McKenzie, another reason why the college is in this predicament, has his own wacko theories to share. They have had their sights on North Idaho College for a long time. They really don't like the University of Idaho. But instead of proposing a solution, which they're required to do, it's the point of the meeting after all, they offer crackpot theories, proving once again that the issue with NIC's accreditation is board governance, possibly even board sanity. Putting the banducci mckinsey conspiracy theories aside, the board has a decision to make. They need to choose one of the three options in case accreditation is pulled next April. And here is a terrifying motion made by Trustee McKinsey. I motion to proceed with option one and be prepared to propose option one by the August board meeting. Option one or option two? Option one. Additionally, this motion orders the NIC administration to develop option two's temporary change of control among solely the following Idaho's institutions, other community colleges, I think that's clear enough, unless you want me to write it. Within Idaho, other community colleges within Idaho, and Lewis and Clark State College, to work and, and to meet weekly with the board chair and legal representation as the chair seems fit. Option one kills NIC, which I believe is what Banducci, McKinsey, Brent Reagan, and all the other authoritarians at the KCRCC want. But McKinsey also wants option two. It's confusing and makes me wonder whether this motion is serious or just a threat. Fortunately, McKinsey gets another chance at bat. This board designates option two as NIC's priority in responding by end of August and to work to NWCCU and to work and meet weekly with the board chair and legal representation as the chair seems fit to produce a formal recommendation no later than August 2nd, 2024 to NIC's board. Collaborating with another college saves NIC should the worst happen. It is the best contingency. Well, honestly, the best contingency is that none of these lunatics or their KCRCC rated and vetted replacements get into office in November. But if that does happen, and if accreditation is pulled, option two means that NIC continues to function, but another college's board makes the final decisions. Effectively, any KCRCC rated and vetted NIC board would be neutralized, stripping them of their power thanks to option two. And I'm good with that. And it seems that the terrible trio is good with it as well, but don't hold your breath. I've heard through the grapevine that the trustees are now unhappy with their choice of option two. Once again, they want to look at the disastrous option one, the teach out, which lets them keep their petty power, but it rings the death knell for NIC. Now, would Banducci, McKinsey, and Wagner rather rule over a kingdom of ashes and keep their positions? We'll have to see, because the deadline is at the end of this month, August. They need to submit a plan to NWCCU. It's a requirement. On August 28th, they have a board meeting where, with only two days to go before the deadline, they must finalize their decision. Stay tuned.